Our passage this morning is Mark 15, 1 to 38. And I've called this When Winning is Losing. The humility, the power and the freedom of Jesus at the most humiliating and oppressive moment of his life is something that is constantly challenging to me and to us. It tells us so much about his character and also his authority and his awareness of the purpose of his life. And in a world, our world, that's lost its bearings and any sort of moral foundation, it seems, to see Jesus in this situation and to take note of his response has the power to be life and vision transforming. Such a liberating experience to see Jesus in this moment. There is such a thing as authority. There is such a thing as conviction. There is such a thing as freedom and there is such a thing as truth and Jesus demonstrates all of these things to us. The passage tells us that very early in the morning the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. No doubt they enjoyed the power they had over him this popular preacher who had done so many miracles and enjoyed such a great following, who had made all sorts of claims about himself and his relationship with God, suddenly he was in their hands. They had power over him and they could show him who was in charge, who had the real power in this setup. Very proudly and with a sense of theatre, no doubt, they handed him over to Pilate, who then questioned him, not in a way designed to gain information or understanding, but in a way that was designed to mock him and humiliate him. Pilate had unarguable power and authority, and he was going to have fun with this small-time preacher. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus made no reply. And the Bible tells us that Pilate was amazed. He couldn't fathom who this was because he couldn't imagine himself in that situation, no doubt, being accused of so many things, being treated in the way he was being treated and saying nothing. Pilate was amazed because he was dealing with someone from another world, from outside of his own world and worldview. The chief priests and Pilate had one worldview, where the bully was king. Their whole rationale was based on getting to the top and staying there. A challenge to their perceived authority would be met vigorously and ruthlessly. There was no question in their minds that there could be any other way of the world. Jesus' quiet resistance was preaching its own message and they didn't like it. We're good at spotting moments like this where Jesus challenges the status quo and we like to identify with him rather than the oppressors. However, it's so easy to miss the moments when we, like the priests, like the crowd, like Herod, are swept up in the mainstream and fail to be true that to all that God calls us to be and to do. Everything that Jesus chose to do in this moment of crisis goes against the natural grain, to keep quiet in the face of injustice, to resist the powerful and to peacefully accept what comes our way without compromising on who we are. We can always find reasons to react in the way basically everybody else does. But we are followers of Christ and so surely we must study him as closely in these moments as when he's preaching and doing his miracles. His example at this most challenging moment must be our standard for the pressures of life we face and the need to resist the flow of the mainstream. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. There is power in numbers. There's power in public opinion. But the voice of God is seldom found there. 
These people cared nothing for justice, only that their mob voice be heard. They would be satisfied for a while with Jesus' conviction and condemnation by Pilate, and then they would collectively move on to something else. There is no progress in that kind of movement. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to get Pilate to release Barabbas instead. The seemingly most powerful man in the whole scenario knew exactly what was going on. He knew what was right and yet he had no power to do it. He threw the question back to the crowd because he didn't know what to do, while the king he mocked quietly watched. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. At its ultimate test, Pilate failed, yet appeared to win. Jesus won, but appeared to fail. It's a sobering lesson for all those who would follow Christ. We get inspired by Jesus. We get encouraged when we see him and the way he he responded to this moment. But being inspired and encouraged is one thing. Following him is something else. And it's very easy to find ourselves on the wrong side of the fence when it comes to the challenge of being a disciple of Jesus. Stuart Townend put it in his song like this. Behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. And as we see Jesus winning through losing and all the paradox that he's demonstrated in this interaction with Pilate, it's important as we reflect and as we pray that we find the not only the encouragement and the inspiration, but the determination to be followers of Jesus, even when it takes us on the same path. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you for Jesus and his example to us. We thank you for all that is loaded into this encounter with Pilate and all that it reveals to us about his heart and his vision and his purpose. And we're mindful, Father, that we are called to be followers of Jesus, even when it means taking the same route, meeting the same opposition, meeting the same challenges. Give us determination, resilience, conviction, faith, peace in the storm, we pray. And this Easter, as we consider all that Jesus was prepared to go through for us, may we follow him on that path, demonstrate the way of the cross, and so open the door for many, many more to receive the fullness of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.